In today's journey, we simplify our control setup by migrating our Raspberry Pi into the same box as the rest of the components. Unfortunately, not as easy as just shoving it in there though. With how much stuff is already crammed in here, base is at a premium. Luckily, we have a plan. Say hello to my little Pi Zero. It's not as powerful as our original Pi 3, but it will be more than enough for our needs. Although, there will be some modifications needed to make it fit. Because even with switching down to a Raspberry Pi Zero, there still isn't any room for the connectors in there. So like any sensible mad scientist, we're gonna hardwire it. First, we're gonna do power directly through the GPIO pins by soldering wires directly to it. And if you're using standardized USB cable, you can follow along right with us. Although every system's a little bit different and therefore you do follow these directions at your own risk. When you splice that wire open, you're gonna find four to five different colored wires. The yellow one is a bonus one. We're gonna take the red and the black and solder them to the designated pads. Just remember that there is no fail safe, so if you do power by the wrong pins, you could fry your pie. If this is your first time, we do recommend using a case that labels all of the pins so that you can be sure you get the right one every time. And if you're feeling a little nervous, just get a bigger control box to build this project in and you can use actual USB connectors. Because this next step of us hardwiring in a USB connector is not for the faint of heart. And although it will not destroy your Pi if you do this improperly, it could cause malfunctions. And it may not always look the prettiest, but if you test it and it works, then at least it works. Luckily for us, this is just a prototype, so we have time to fix it and make it more pretty for the final product. Here is a clean Pi to see what we did better. We stripped back a standard USB cable and soldered the red wire to PP1, black to PP6, green to PP22, and white to PP23. Being careful not to create a short between any of the pads, specifically PP23 and that ground pin. Don't worry if your Pi doesn't have any of the numbers by the pins, so long as you have a Pi Zero version 1.1, they should be in the same location. Models made after 2020 may not be so lucky. And now that we have all those mods out of the way, let's go on to setting up the software. And for step one, we went ahead and made a cheat sheet for all the Pi links you may need during this on our website because we got sick of looking them up ourselves. That's the bbc.net backslash pi for a direct link. And we are gonna kinda speed through this part as most people probably already know it. Step one, download Raspberry Pi OS, formerly called Raspbian, but regardless, it's still on Buster. The only thing you wanna make sure you do at this point is that you download the light version as this won't have the GUI interface helping the Pi Zero run faster. And we did also include a link to the archives in case you need to hunt down one of the older versions of Raspberry Pi OS. Next, you wanna make sure that you have the current version of Etcher so that you can make a bootable SD card for installing the operating system onto the Raspberry Pi Zero. Once everything's installed and downloaded, run it through Etcher, just like you would for any other Raspberry Pi install. And don't use our footage as a guideline for how long this should take as we are using time manipulation. But if you're wondering, it took us about a minute 10 real time. And because we don't wanna waste our time hooking up keyboards, mice, and monitors to the Raspberry Pi Zero, we're gonna hook it up in what's called headless mode. This will let us push lines of code to the Raspberry Pi over the network. Because most of the brewing software for Raspberry Pi is based off web hosting, it, there's no reason not to set it up this way. We like to use this really easy to use headless Pi program, but we also on our shortcut page have all the text that you would need to set up the document yourself. But we are lazy and willing to download questionable software off the internet. So we download this easy tool that will create the necessary files for the Raspberry Pi to automatically set up its network at first install. And although Windows may not trust them, we trust them enough with our computer to run this program. So we'll give permission. Once the program opens, click Enable SSH and Configure Wireless. This program will figure out any networks that your computer is already connected to. And that's why some of the text is blurred out on the screen. Once you've checked both boxes, you're ready to hit the left button and then the right button. And this will create all the files you need before ejecting the SD card. And of course, if you're a more advanced user, you could have made these files yourself. And although the Raspberry OS will install by itself the first time you turn on the Pi with the SD card in it, we thought it'd be cool to do a head-to-head -head race between a Raspberry Pi 3 and a Raspberry Pi Zero on installing the OS. Sped up, of course. Final result, it took the Raspberry Pi 3 48 seconds to install, where the Raspberry Pi Zero took an additional 21 seconds. Not surprising, as the Raspberry Pi Zero has about half the processing power. And with Raspberry Pi OS installed, we just have a couple things left to do. 
one of which is downloading PuTTY, a tool that will let us push code to the Raspberry Pi over the network. This page may look a little intimidating, but for Windows users, grab the 64-bit MSI, and for Mac users, grab the tar file below. And once you get through that simple install program, run the program itself. A program of which you will probably only have to run once if you do this right. The only thing you have to do in this window is type in pi at raspberry.local before hitting open. And that will automatically find a Raspberry Pi on your network using those credentials. It's even gone so far as to select the username for you. And this is actually the hardest part on the software side at this point. It's remembering that when you type in your password, you won't see any characters at all. And for those that don't know, the default password to every Raspberry is Raspberry, which is extremely dangerous. Which is why the very first thing we're going to do to this Pi is change the password. It even tells you how to do it right here in this first window. So type in pass WD and change your password because IOT devices are susceptible to hacking. Mostly because everyone leaves the default password and username open for anyone to use. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, just something that people don't know what it is without guessing. Just keep it easy because you probably will never type this password in again anyways. Unless someday in the future you need to run some sort of update or upgrade or something. But for now, you're ready to install any of these programs we have listed on our page. Just remember, Craft Brew Pi 3 has three lines of code you'll have to copy and paste, whereas Firmatrack will only have one. We prefer Firmatrack because it's got a better user face than Brew Pi Remix, and yet it uses Brew Pi Remix to do most of the heavy lifting. So just copy this line of code, and then when you switch to the terminal, all you have to do is right click to paste it. Hit enter and it will take care of everything automatically at this point onward, including making sure that your Pi is all the way up to date. During this install process, the Raspberry Pi Zero is going to take a very long time, about 50 minutes from start to finish actually, including getting the updates. During this time, there will be several times where it will seem like the Raspberry Pi is frozen, when in fact it is not. Now, this is one of the reasons why we recommend using a full-size Raspberry Pi when starting any kind of projects like these, and then later on substituting it out for a Raspberry Pi Zero once you have everything working. Install time on a Raspberry Pi 3, about 21 minutes. The good news is, is that during this install time, there will be no user interface activity that needs to happen, so you can go off and do something else or let this run overnight. For us though, we're going to use the magic of time distortion to get through this video quicker. The main takeaway at this point though, is that don't let the Pi lose power because you may have to restart the entire process from the beginning if the SD card gets corrupted. And is why we actually keep at least one SD card on deck ready to go at a moment's notice. But that's the problem with some of these DIY solutions is that the most minor of glitches could make you have to go back to the beginning and reinstall everything from square one. The good news is, is that once these things are set up, they're pretty bulletproof. Now you just need to use this IP address here on any computer that is on the same network as the Pi, and you are all set to finish setting things up. But that concludes how to install Firmatrek headless style for the best Brew Pi remix experience in our opinion. In the next video of this series, we will show you how we set up the software to run our fermentation chamber. In the meantime, post any questions or comments down below.